The last video I did, I got a lot of flack because they said, hey, this is just a bunch of talking in a hangar. Where's the airplanes? Where's the flying? Well, this video is for you. It's all flying. When we last left this story, I was desperately trying to get my airplane home. It's been four weeks since then, and that's four weeks of Canadian wildfire smoke, thunderstorms, COVID, more thunderstorms, more smoke, airplane cancellations, just like unbelievable amount of things trying to not let me get my airplane home. So this time it's going to work, even though I was supposed to fly out at 7 a.m. and the flight got delayed until 5.30 p.m. Thank you, American Airlines. I'm now on the ground in sunny Chicago, leaving behind cloudy Cleveland, uh, walking through Chicago O'Hare, and then driving up to Racine to here is the airplane. Now it's been four weeks since I've seen or flown my airplane, I have to get some time in just to make sure that I'm good with landing and I have to be able to land short uh, or at least in a short amount of space because the runways here where they are 6,000 feet at my home airport I have 3,200 feet so I want to make sure that I can get into that airport every time so I'm going to go up and do some flights with the existing owner the previous owner and we'll go up and do some takeoffs and landings and I want to make sure that I can do it consistently so here goes the first takeoff with the previous owner along with me so we're a bit heavy up front uh, I do need to get some speed in order to get the uh, canard to generate enough lift to rotate the nose up and then as soon as I do that it just wants to pop up in the air with all the back force that I've got on the stick and I, I have to apologize my camera the, the card in my camera was dying there there you can see I, I pop up into the air my card is having a little bit of issues and as a result I, I do have some stuttering on this on these videos and I apologize for that I didn't realize it until after the fact so okay so we got off there let's uh, come around and we'll uh, uh, flew off into the practice area for a bit to do some familiarization and knowledge transfer on the avionics. I uh, just wanted to get my hands on the uh, autopilot, navigation, and just all the avionics to make sure that I was uh, familiar with it. Because it's one thing to sit and read all the manuals for it, but it's another t thing entirely to go and do it in the airplane while you're trying to fly it. And of course, it was a beautiful night, nice calm. And, uh, there was some actual thunderstorms coming in from the north, so it was uh, time to go in and, and do some landing. So here's my first landing uh, coming in on the, uh, I think it's runway four here at, at Racine. I am too high and I am too fast. You can see I got four white lights on the Vazzy. That's just, that's just not going to cut it. So I, I gave up. I didn't even try to, to save this one. I just went around. Now you can see I'm going around. There's the thunderstorm that's that's uh, coming in from the north over uh, Milwaukee. And we do have to beat that. However, it's still a nice night, so let's go in here and we'll, we'll give the uh, second landing another try here. My camera is at a bit of an angle, I noticed. The, uh, the canard appears to be at a about a 15 degree bank all the time. Uh, I'm gonna have to have a look at the camera mount and see if I can fix that. Okay, so now I'm still a bit high. I got one red and three white on the Vazzy. Uh, my speeds are okay, so I've pulled my power back here to try to lose some altitude. Um, and as a result, you can see I'm still quite high. I'm too high at this point. And uh, even with the power out, and I've got the, the nose up to try to uh, you know make sure I'm staying in my speed range. And you can see I've still got four whites and a bit of a red there. Okay, so now I'm definitely too high and I'm coming down. So I've got my descent rate is now reasonably high. It's a little bit too high. And those two on the right now are red. You can see them turning red as we get in here. So now I've got to arrest this descent rate because I am coming in kind of quickly. So I do that and of course the camera stalls. Uh, I rested that descent right near the ground and I held it off until the landing. Okay, not a great landing. Uh, it did kind of it not didn't bounce the mains, but uh, did bounce the nose wheel when it came down. So it was a little more firm than I would have liked. So we'll taxi back and give that another try. All right, this takeoff, I'm expecting to have to pull a little bit harder up and have the nose come up 
quickly on that rotation once the, the canard starts flying. So I'm expecting that, so I'm going to counter for that a little bit better. I do need a little bit extra speed because, as I said, we have some weight in the front seats. So here I'm going to pull the nose back and it up it comes and I'm just going to push it forward a little bit to make sure that it doesn't over rotate. And there we go, we start climbing out. Much better. All right, coming in for our second landing, you can see I'm much lower this time. I've got th one white and three red, which, for, you know, on, normally you want to see two and two, but for this airplane, you really kind of want to drag it in because if you carry any kind of height or speed in there, you're just going to float all day long down the runway. So uh, kind of dragging it in. So this is pretty much the attitude that you want to see. This is just about right. I got the speeds right. I got the, uh, the lights right. Everything looks good. This is a, a nice stabilized land, uh, approach, and uh, I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with this here. So there's my, my round out, no real flare. Just hold it off, and down it comes. And again, the nose comes down a little bit hard, but we've got a lot of weight in the front seats, and that's why. All right, it is getting dark and we do have that thunderstorm coming in from the north over Milwaukee, so we decide to call it a night. Tomorrow. All right, we're going to go back up again together. It is a beautiful day. It's uh, fairly warm. We do have a fair bit of rising air currents because the sun is just beating down on the ground. So we've got a little bit of low-level turbulence. I wouldn't say wind shear, but it's, it's definitely a bit gusty and turbulent. Once again, I'm going to pull off here gently and I think I, I've got the uh, the pull off a lot better down here I'm not over rotating you can see I'm getting tossed around a little bit there because of the uh, the heating and we'll come around here for a landing I'm definitely getting tossed around here on the thermal so I did keep a little bit extra speed in uh, my my heights and, and attitude look good, but the speed I do I am carrying about an extra five or seven knots in here just because of the gusts, and of course when I carry extra speed in that means I'm going to have to bleed that speed off in the flare, and you'll see that actually occurring as I come in here. There's, there we go, and we're down. So a little bit of gustiness in there as I'm holding it in that flare, but uh, a little bit of um, a crosswind, but uh, just minor. So not a problem, really. That was a, a acceptable landing, I guess. So on this takeoff, right at the time of rotation, got a little bit of a, a gust, a little sidewind gust, which was uh, a little bit fun. And of course, my camera is stalling again. And there's our gusts there, and we start climbing out. The second landing, you can see the smoke there on the left. There's not a whole lot of wind, but it's it's definitely uh, turbulent because of that rising heat. 
Uh, again, I'm going to keep the speed up on this approach and keep a nice flat approach profile. Uh, I did a little bit differently on this time when I was in the flare. It started actually a little bit before the flare that uh, I got on both rudders because when you can actually push both rudders out at the same time which acts as a makeshift speed brake so it helps bleed off the speed just a little bit faster. So you hear we're rocking and rolling from all that, that gusty heat coming up. And again, camera memory card issues. And you can see because I held that speed in there, I did hold it in the flare for quite a while. All right, so that's enough duel. It's time to taxi into the hangar, let out my passenger, and go give this a try on my own. Previous owner did tell me that it is definitely going to fly differently uh, on my own. You're gonna, he said, uh, you're gonna notice a difference in the climb rate. You're gonna did notice a difference on rotation. So he he did say, just be ready for that. As you notice, as I taxied up, there was an audience uh, in the hangar. They they were watching and listening on the radio. One hour later. And away I go. It's definitely hot. I decided to taxi out with the uh, canopy open just because it was it's like a greenhouse in there if you shut it. So I just needed uh, uh, the, the wind coming in there. All right. So I was expecting a much lighter nose on my own. And so, of course, when this thing comes off, I am not surprised. Have a look at, at how quickly the and how much runway I use on this takeoff roll compared with the previous ones. So there's the fixed distance markers and I'm off already for a 1200 foot ground roll. So that was significantly faster than previous. And I also noticed that it is climbing like a rocket. I, I saw you know, sustained climb rates of 1500 feet per minute, which was definitely not the case when I was uh, with a, a passenger in there. Okay, so now I'm here doing my landing practice on my own just to make sure that I can easily get into a, a runway of 3,200 feet, which is my home airport. That's 3,200 feet with wires at one end and trees at the other. So I, I really need to be able to make sure I can get into a 3,200 foot runway consistently and safely. So I'm coming in here on this 6,400 foot runway and I am trying to do my best at a a semblance of what you would say is a short field landing in a cozy. Of course, there goes my camera again. You notice, I notice it happens at the same spot. I wonder if it has to do with radio transmitters right there. Maybe the ILS. Okay, so there's my landing and I'm hard on the brakes. I did hold a little bit of speed because I was getting tossed around and I was a bit high, so I pulled the power early and uh, bled off some speed in the flare and then braking. So not great i used about 2500 feet of runway uh, i'm you know still well within the 3200 feet of my home runway but uh, i definitely need to do better than that so let's let's try again you'll notice the takeoff roll is almost again identical 1200 feet you'll see right at the uh, first set of fixed distance markers i am pretty much off the ground so here's our touchdown zone yeah, that camera is stalling in the scene. There's the fixed distance markers, and I'm off. Yeah, the camera stalls at the same place every time, so I, I have a feeling it must be down to a, a radio transmitter on the airport there. All right, this landing was not good. 
I, my speeds were all over the place. I'm high, the speed, I couldn't keep the speed stable. I, I mean, instead of holding the speed I was wanting, I was up 10 knots, down 10 knots, and then I was high, then I was low. I, I can't figure out why I cannot stabilize this approach. It just seems like every time I, I, I do something, something else changes. My descent rate is too high, it's gusty, and and... I don't, something is definitely different here. I'm trying to think maybe it's because of the winds. I mean, I'm, I'm going to pull a halfway decent landing out of it, but it, the, the approach was just totally unstabilized. I don't know what was going on. Well, I did. I found out in a moment. So now I'm down, hard on the brakes. And I used 2,100 feet of runway this time. So that's fine. That's that's well within my safe route safety range for a 3,200 foot runway. And then I went to put the speed brake up, the landing brake, and realized, oh, it's not down. And that was the reason why I could not stabilize that approach. Because the landing brake doesn't really slow you down, but it really stabilizes your speed. So without having that down, oh, you know what it is? It's when I transmit on the radio. That's what's killing the, the, the camera. Okay, so anyway. Um, Another takeoff here, again, 1,200 foot ground roll every time. It's pretty much exactly the same every time. It's definitely getting a lot more gusty, I noticed. Coming around for the third landing. This time I have the landing brake out. Much better stabilized speed and descent. I'm really getting tossed around. So I'm, I, I am holding again another five or seven knots extra speed in. And uh, I'm really kind of just trying to get, make sure I have a stabilized approach in there. Of course, I'm going to use a little bit extra runway simply because of that, that gustiness, then the extra speed that I'm holding in. And there I'm using up all kinds of runway in the flare, just trying to bleed off speed. This time I used 2,500 feet of runway. If I had come in probably five knots slower, I, I bet I would have been closer to 2,000. All right, so at this point, I am confident that I can get into my home airport and I'm kind of tired of getting blown around. So I taxied in, got all my stuff. A few moments later. So I've loaded up all my stuff, fueled up and prepared to go home. So now that I'm loaded up with all my gear and full fuel, I'm definitely going to see a longer ground roll. I saw about 1,600 foot ground roll instead of the 1,200 feet. This is a, a big difference for uh, 150 pounds of fuel and bags. Uh, it, it really makes a big difference in the amount of ground roll you need. So this is it. I'm on my way home. I decided to circumvent the Chicago uh, Class B, so I kind of went out and around it. I ended up climbing up above some clouds, and I did uh, a, a test at uh, 7,500 foot density altitude uh, at full power, which was asked uh, to be done by Cato Props because they wanted to get some performance numbers for uh, a prop that I'm looking at maybe purchasing for this airplane. And it did look like the clouds might be building a little bit higher, so I decided to stay beneath them. So it was a bit less smooth of a ride. I was originally planning to skirt the Toledo Class C, but that would have put me close to some rain to the south. So I instead I just called them up and got cleared through it. But doing so actually put me on a track that would point me towards the Cedar Point Amusement Park, where my wife was at the moment. So I decided, well, small diversion. I'll just uh, turn left a little bit, and we'll head right over top of Cedar Point. I sent a message to her, a text message via my inReach, but uh, she didn't see the message in time to see me fly over.
So now it's time to prepare to scoot under the Cleveland Class B and into my home airport. Here's my first landing at my home airport, and this is the real thing. 3,200 foot runway with power lines at one end and trees at the other. I have to be on my A game. Speeds and altitudes have to be just right. There's no VASI for help, so I'm just working on altitude, airspeed, and sight picture. Uh, I'm surprisingly, I wasn't nervous, I was just busy. I did have a plan B here because if I wasn't comfortable coming in here, if I thought, if I got close and I thought, you know what, I don't think I can do this, then I had a couple of other nearby airports with long runways I could, I knew I could very easily get into, but I was, I was reasonably confident that I was going to have no problem getting in here. One of the challenges in this airport is that it is under, uh, we're fairly close to Cleveland and we are underneath the Cleveland Class B which means we have uh, uh, an 800 foot pattern altitude rather than a thousand feet so it's it's a little close and tight you can see the trees at the end of the runway and on the close end of the runway there is actually a road and on the far side of the road there is a set of power lines so uh, there are obstructions in getting in and out of here I've flown in and out of here in other airplanes, but this is the first time in the cozy. So there's the trees and power lines. And I had my speed and everything just nailed perfectly here. A little bit of a float. Let it settle and down and break. hard on the brakes and I actually made the first turnaround. So that meant that I just landed this airplane in 2,000 feet. At this point, I'm feeling rather pleased with myself, and uh, I'm going to taxi in and fill up with fuel and then put the airplane into the hangar, which of course was not as easy as I thought it was going to be, because it turns out that the apron going up to my hangar, there was a, a fair-sized lip uh, going up to the actual hangar floor, and uh, I couldn't get it up into the hangar. I ended up, uh, well, I'll show you in a moment what I had to do. First, I parked and get some fuel. And here's what my father, who I flew with all my life, said after every single flight. <sighs> Cheated death yet again. I figured that's a tribute to my father, who always said that after every flight. All right, well, I did get it in. I had to, uh, I had to run home and build a couple of ramps. I had to cut some plywood up and uh, make ramps out of it, a couple pieces of plywood. And with the help of a neighbor, I was able to pull it in. And uh, because I have no tie down for the nose, and I haven't got enough ballast in the nose right now. I just parked it in the grazing position. And I do have a, a piece of carpet on the ground in there just to treat it nicely. Tomorrow I'll come out and I'll, I'll put a, a D-ring in the floor and tie it down so that it's secure and I don't have to have it nose down on the ground. But that's it. That's the first day of ownership. There's my cozy Mark IV. It's home in my hangar and ready for adventure. Now I did complain to the airport that I had great difficulty getting my plane in and out, so they just said, okay, we'll we'll take care of it. And they are 
as we speak, digging up and paving me a brand new apron into my hanger. So that's great. I hope you liked what you saw here. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And if you did like this video, hey, click like, click subscribe, all that stuff. It helps me out. I really appreciate everyone who's left me comments. I do read them all. Lots of encouraging thoughts. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for watching.